this is episode three. So the first video, the first characteristic of a virtuous woman is that the virtuous woman understands God's order. Secondly, she knows her role. Okay. The third characteristic of the virtuous woman is she honors her husband. All right. The fourth characteristic is that the virtuous woman supports the man of God. All right. Now the fifth characteristic, the fifth characteristic of a virtuous woman, she teaches her children. You understand? She teaches her children. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus. Give me Ecclesiasticus chapter 3 verse 1. Sirach. Ecclesiasticus chapter 3 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 3, verses 1. The mark. Give me your father, O children, and do thereafter, that ye may be safe. Me? For the Lord hath given the father honor over the children, uh -huh. and hath confirmed the authority of the mothers over the sons. So now, this is the order that the Lord has set up when it comes to dealing with the children, the order of the house, okay? He says, ye be your father or children, and do thereafter, that ye may be safe. Because when you follow the father's command, you're going to be safe. Okay? He says, for the Lord has given the father honor over the children, and has confirmed the authority of the mother over the son. The father does that. You understand? The father is the one that makes sure that the woman teaches the children. That's the order that the Lord has set up. The virtuous woman understands that. The virtuous woman understands that when the father corrects the children, guess what's going to happen? She's not going to interfere or intervene. She's not going to undermine that man. Because a lot of the times, the black woman, that's what they do. When the father disciplines the children, they're going to say, oh no, but you're too hard. Oh no, but don't do that. Why you, let, you see that thing? What, when you do that, guess what? You're giving, you're, you're, you're actually, deep, you're, deep, you're plucking the house down because you are destroying the order that the Lord has set up. Those children, now they're going to divide and conquer. They're going to divide the husband from the wife. You understand? They will divide you because they know that this is, he's the bad cop, the mother is the good cop. Oh no. The way it's supposed to be, the way out the Lord wants it is that when the, the children should know, if I go to my mother, I'm going to get the same answer. If I go to my father, I'm going to get the same answer. Therefore, I don't have a choice. Bow down. It's that simple. Okay? The virtuous woman understands that. Because she understands that her role is to do what? Is to teach the children. That's mission business. To teach the children to honor the father. Because that's, the black women don't do that. But the, we're not talking about the black women. We're talking about the virtuous woman. Okay? The virtuous woman understands that my job is to make sure that these children honor their father. The reason why you see children today out of order because they don't honor their fathers because the mothers, they speak evil of their fathers in front of their children. So now whenever there's the young, especially the girls, the young girls, when they go out there, they have a very negative and evil perception of their father because of this blacky ass demon. So guess what? They will, they will have what? Baby issue. They will have daily issues. Because guess what they're going to do? Based on everything that the mother is, is telling them about the, their father, Guess what? When they go out there, they rebel because of what? The information that the mother has been feeding them, making the father look bad. You understand? So as a nation, the sisters, you need to make sure that you don't allow that thing to go down. You read that again. The last chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear me, your father, old children, and do thereafter, that ye may be safe. For the Lord has given the father honor over the children and has confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Have confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons because the father says that order. You understand? Give me Sarah 723. He's asking you. Chapter 7, verse 23. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 23. Has thou children instruct him? and bow down their neck from the youth. You see that thing? This is a command. You have children, instruct your children. Teach the children. Sit down with your children, illustrate things. See if they grasp the concepts of understanding the law, applying the law. You understand? Ask them questions. You see a scenario, ask your children, 
What is that lobby? What is that situation? Which lobby attends to the situation? They must be able to be able to connect the dots to see that, okay, this behavior is tied to this law. That behavior, that conduct is tied to that law. They need to understand that thing. So your job is to teach the, teach the children. All right? Read that again, verse 23. The book of Ecclesiastes 7, verse 23. Has thou children instructed and bow down their neck from their youth? He says, bow the children's neck from their youth, meaning teach them from when they are young. From the minute they pop out of their mother's womb, as they start to grow, guess what? Your job is to make sure that you are, you bear, you bow their neck from their youth. They need to understand honor. They need to understand respect. Especially the sisters, the girls, you need to make sure that they understand the importance of honoring their father. Very important. The, 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 men, the, the, the boys also, they need to understand it. Okay? Because if they don't understand it, guess what they're going to do? They're going to go out there, they're going to marry, they're going to marry their own mother. And not the, the good example of their mother, no, not the poor example. They're going to bring that hole in the house. And the mothers, they're going to hate, they're going to hate the hole that the, the son has brought in. Not realizing that she's a reflection of him. You understand? Read on, verse 24. Has thou daughters have a care of their body mm -hmm. and show not thyself cheerful toward them? You see that thing? Has thou daughters have a care of their body and show not thyself cheerful towards them? So your job is to make sure that you educate your daughters. They need to know about hygiene. They need to know how to self-care. They need to be able to understand the importance of dress code, what it means, the importance of head covering, what it means. You understand? Have a care of their body. The, the importance of making sure that they don't show off the things that the husband is supposed to see. Your job as the, as the mother, your job is to do that, to instill that order in them so that they don't go out there being loose cannons. You understand? You prevent a whole lot of stuff. Okay? As our daughters, you must instruct them. That's your job. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. And by the way, because sisters, don't think that because you don't have children, you don't have children. Oh no, don't get it twisted. The young girls that are coming in, guess who they are looking up to? You. So don't think that because you never actually gave birth to a children, now you that this class does not, this part of the class does not pertain to you. Of course it pertains to you. A good spirit is the one that every class pertains to them. Why? Because they know that this is preparation for the future. Children coming into the truth, your job, young girls, under your, you, younger than you, your job is to teach them. Your job is to teach, and how do you teach? You teach by example. Your conduct, guess what? They're going to mimic what you do. So understand it. All right? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. Come on. These words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, shall be in your mind. Read on. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Thou shalt what? Teach them diligently unto thy children. You shall teach the laws of God diligently to your children. You know what it means to be diligent? You actually, you actually have to set up, uh, you have to set up a system where you make sure that the children learn. The children, the children they, they need routine. You understand? You need to establish a routine for the children. The children must be able to know, okay, when we wake up, we wake up at this time. This is what we do. After we do this, we do that. After we do that thing, we do they learn by example and routine, consistency. That's why it says diligently. You can't be a slothful sister. Virtuous woman is not a slothful woman. She makes sure that she doesn't uh, she doesn't take the children and give them to the grandmother. And then she continues to hoard herself. No. The virtuous woman, guess what she does? The virtuous sister. She teaches the children diligently. She comes up with the programs, educational programs, you understand, to be able to make sure that the information that is in here sinks in their mind so that their conduct, their speech, even when they are sitting, they talk about the scriptures, they talk about their foremothers, so on and so forth. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou lowest down, and when thou risest up. So now, diligence, the diligence comes in when you come up with these educational programs 
using the scriptures and real life example. I mean, real life examples of okay, when you see the situation, what that means, how they interact with one another. You need to be able to see if the interaction is evil, they need to be able to show you which scripture to go to to explain that and how to what how to avoid doing that. That that takes diligence. A virtuous sister, a virtuous woman, she will she will she she takes honor in that because she understands that her job is to what uh, to prepare the children for the father, to make sure that when they get to a certain age, now is the father to take over to do what? To take the teachings to the next level. But your job is to what? Because when they are young, you need a lot of patience. You need to come up with what? You need to come up with ways. Sometimes you have to sing the scriptures to them so that they can get into their head. So they have they get into the habit of rehearsing the scripts. Okay, so that the conversation can be clean. The conversation can be chased. Once the conversation is chased, the mind is chased. The behavior and the conduct becomes chased. The virtuous woman understands that thing. You understand? When she sits down with the children, guess what? Philippians 1.27, read that. Philippians 1.27. Yeah, Philippians 1.27. Yeah, the book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Only let your conversation be as it become at the gospel of Christ. Come on. That whether I come and see you, or, or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. So now you see that thing right there. It says, "Only let your conversation become as, as be as as it becometh the gospel of Christ." He says that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. Meaning what? When your children are not with you, they are somewhere else, they're at the school, you understand? Or they are looking your or on that day or for that moment, for that hour, your grandmother, your your mother is is actually dealing with the children. When you when you take the children back after that hour because you needed to go somewhere for, for, for that reason and so forth, guess what? When you come back to collect the children, your mother will say, you know what? Yeah, you really teach the children. They are very well behaved, they speak well, they don't disrespect. You understand? They follow order, they follow instruction. You want to hear those things. You want to hear of their affairs, how they conduct themselves when you are not there. That's when you know you've done well as a parent. You understand? Give me that in Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. The book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. You see that thing? It says train up a child. You must train them. You know what it means to train? Training requires diligence, discipline, order, command, structure. You need to set up a structure. You need to put a timetable together. I want to tell you about timetable. You need to do that. You understand? You need to be able to have that timetable so that the children, even when they grow up, guess what they're going to do when they grow up? Whether you've got girls, you've got boys, what, guess what's going to happen when they grow up? They're going to have order in their life. They're going to have structure. They're going to have well sound. They're going to have a sound mind. They're going to have a clearly defined goal. They're not going to be all over the place. Why? Because you train them up from when they are still young. You bound their neck from when they are still young. And when they grow, when they grow old, they're not going to depart from it. Why? Because now it's in their spirit. The minute they start to do anything outside of that, they're going to know immediately. Now I'm not, I'm not in the spirit. I'm not moving according to the education that my mother and my father taught me. You understand? Go back to Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in, the, in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou lowest down. And when they rise it up. So now, when you wake up in the morning, so when you sit down, when you're sitting down with your children in the house, because guess what? You are a virtuous woman. You know how to order your house. You understand? You know how to do that. Because the way you honor your husband, you make sure that you order that house correctly. Make sure that your, your husband comes home, everything is in order. There's, there's no filth. The dishes are not filled up in the sink. The, 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 the pots are not filthy from, you know, food from day before yesterday. You don't do that. You make sure the house is in order. You understand? Give me that instruction, please. I'm going to sidebar for a second. 
I'm gonna pre I'm gonna I'm gonna preface what I'm about to bring out with what with this. Give me that in Sirach, um chapter 26, verse 16. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 16. As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of a house. You see that thing? You must order your house right. You must order your house correctly. Your house must be in order. You understand? And the only way to make sure that you order your house so that you can be beautiful in the sight of your husband, your lord, your king, you make sure that your house is in order. Guess what? The children are looking at them. Your daughters, you've got daughters, they're looking at them. You've got sons, they're looking at them. You say, you know what? When I grow up, I want a wife like that. Just like my mother. Because my mother was always what? In subjection to my father. She respected him. She reverenced him. Have a deep, she had deep respect for that man. I want that. You see that thing? So when you have girls, guess what you do? You need to make sure that the way you conduct yourself, how you order your house, guess what? The children must be on your side, learning from you. The children must not be sitting by themselves. What are they doing? What are they talking about? They're gossiping. They're going to start to do some evil stuff because they're left to themselves. You understand? So you need to make sure that they are always by your side to do what to make sure that they learn, they know how to cook. You, when they get to a certain age, now you teach them how to do the dishes. You teach them how to wipe. You teach them how to clean, how to, how to mop the floor, so on and so how to fold the clothes. Like, I'll give an example, like with my daughters. You understand? My daughters, like, in, we make sure that from an early age, that is what they will do. They wake up in the morning, there's a timetable. The timetable is followed every day, and they know, they also look at it, they understand. In the morning, we pray, we sing, we sing and we pray. And then after that, there's chores that we're going to do. And then there's schoolwork that we do. You understand? If one of the child is, is learning how to read, guess what? She's been taught how to read. One of them, she's been taught how to write, she's going to be taught how to write. Arithmetic, grammar, so on and so forth. You cannot do that if you don't have a timetable. And at the same time, you still have to cook. Okay? Make sure that the house is in order, the house is clean. Whereas you are doing that, the one that is oldest, they can be able to do things and start to show them, okay, I need you to sweep that part of the house. I need you to do that. Wipe the table. Do that. So on and so forth. They learn by example because they're watching you also. You understand? So when they grow up, you know that, listen, you know, I've done all that I can in the spirit of the Lord. The children, the most like God, will take it, will take it from here. Okay? Go back to um, go back to Deuteronomy six verse seven. The book of Deuteronomy is six verse seven, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, mm -hmm. and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. So now, when you're sitting down in the house, whatever you're doing, make sure that your children know what you're doing. Teach them, show them. Okay. Then it says. Um, when thou walkest by the way, when you're going outside with your children, let's say whether you go shopping, you understand, you buy, you're going to go, go get groceries or clothes, whatever have you, ask them the question, the things they see, you see that, you see women dressed like a whore, tell them, okay, what is that? What is that according to the scripture? That's a whore right there. Okay, I never want to see you like, cannot, I must never see you just like that. Things of that nature, they need to know that. When they see, if you've got girls, would they look at the men? Is that the man of the Lord? Why is he like this? So, okay, that's a homemaker. You understand? He's smoking weed. He hates himself. He needs to get himself right. These are things that they, when they grow, they want to be able to pick those things up. Then they will be able to know how to what? How to choose a spouse according to the script. Likewise with the sons, you do the same thing. Okay? Then it says, um, when thou liest down, meaning before you sleep, that's what you must do. A virtual sister will understand, okay, bedtime story. I need to go through the history. I need to go over excellence. I need to show my children how the Lord delivered the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. They need to know the history of their forefathers. They need to know the history of their foremothers. They need to know that. Or their forefathers and foremothers, they need to understand that history. So that when they're talking among themselves, guess what? They're going to be talking about the history, what Moses did, what, 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 what Shifra did, what Pua did, what Judith did. Once you start to get, to, once the children get to that level, then you know that really they are in the right track. Okay? Those are bedtime stories. When thou rises up, when they wake up in the morning, there's no kill you. Oh, yeah, I'm showing my age now. Okay? There's no, none of that. They don't sit down and watch cartoons. No. They wake up in the morning, 
you tease them like, no, wake up in them when the most high God comes first. You understand? And you make sure that when they wake up, the first thing they do, they must go and wait and do what? And greet their father. Shalom. Okay? Shalom. The most high Christ bless you. You understand? They need to learn stuff like that. A virtuous woman, your job is to do that. Shalom, baby. How most high Christ bless you? How did you sleep? So on and so forth. They need to. They need to do that. You are teaching them. Okay. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter thirty-one, verse twelve. Deuteronomy chapter thirty-one, verse twelve. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter thirty-one, verse twelve. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law. Next verse. And that they children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. You see that thing? As long. So it says, and that the children, they are their children which have not known anything. The virtuous woman understands it. You understand? She understands that the only way for me to make sure that I don't have dumb and rebellious kids, I need to, I, I understand that these children don't know nothing. My job is to, is to give them what? Education that when they grow up, they're not going to depart from it. You understand? So that's why it says that they may hear. How are they going to hear that? That means your job is to do what? When thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou, when, thou, when, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. They need to be hearing the laws of God over and over and over daily. Because the more they hear, their faith is going to increase. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews. Okay? Give me Hebrews chapter 11. Give me Hebrews 11 verse 3. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. They were what? So that things by the word of God. So by faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. Come on. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay, so because of faith, because when the Lord did this, we didn't see him do it. Okay, um, come on. No, no, um, read verse six now. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That do what? That diligently seek him. Because the children, they need, your children need to see that. As a mother, as a virtuous woman, you need to make sure that your children, they, they, what, they develop faith in the Lord. They must be able to, the only way to develop that faith is not going to land on their lap. You have to make sure that daily you teach them. When you wake up, when you're sitting by, when you sit with them, when you're walking with them, when you go to sleep, you must make sure that you do that. So that the children have faith in the Lord. They must not have faith in Superman. They must not be having faith in, I don't know, Wonder Woman. No. They must not be having faith in celebrities. No, say no. Shakira is my role model. Nicki Minaj, no, to hell with that. Okay? You need to make sure that the, the children must have role models. They must have that. Your job as the virtuous woman, your job is to make sure that children have good role models. And guess what? The first role models they must have is you. You're the first role model in the house because you're going to model your behavior according to the Bible because you want them to model their behavior according to you. They even by example and by observation. You understand? So the more you act according to what is written, they're going to mimic that behavior because you are teaching them to do that thing. Give me Romans 10 verse 17. The book of Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Mm -hmm. Hearing. By the word of God. So faith cometh by hearing. And what must you be hearing? The word of God. Your faith is going to come from hearing the word of God. So hold this. Go back to Deuteronomy 6. I mean, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 13. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 13. 13. Come on. And that the children which have not known anything that may hear. May what? 
may hear. May hear, may hear, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So you need to make sure that you, the way to build your, the, your children's faith, you need to make sure that you what? They must constantly be hearing the scriptures all the time, 24 seven. It must be precepts, scripts, you understand? Correction, and when you correct the children, you need to make sure you make, let them to know, understand why they're being corrected. They need to know. Your children must be able to associate cause and effect. Break the laws of God, you get punished. Keep the laws of God, you get rewarded. They need to be able to understand cause and effect. Because today, we were talking to the sisters at camp, you understand? They didn't understand that, um, you know, you break the laws, you get, get, get punished. They thought, they said, no, you know, judgment, is it not, when things go wrong, it's not the devil, no, it's the Lord. And I'm, talking, I'm not talking about young sisters in the 20s, in the 20s. No. 30 plus, 35 plus. That's what they think. Things go bad in the world, no, it's Satan. No, it's the Lord. The Lord is doing that. So children from the young age, they need to know cause and effect. So a virtuous sister with a virtuous woman, a virtuous wife, she'll be able to do what? To sit down with the children and teach them. To show them if you do this, this was going to happen. The reason why this is happening to you is because of what? Sin. You go to that sin, you explain it to them. That's why this is happening to you. And that's why you need to repent. That's why you need to get your mind right. You understand? Children need to know from that or from a very early age while well, the mind is still soft. Okay? Go back to Romans 10, verse 17. The book of Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Your children are not gonna are not gonna build their faith if every day they're watching YouTube, they're watching YouTube, they're watching uh, cartoons, they're watching GTV, they are watching Netflix. Where's the how are they gonna how are you gonna build your children's faith? Because they're not gonna put their faith in the Lord, they're gonna put their faith in the things they see on TV, the idols they see on TV. They're gonna put their faith on what? They are, they are celebrities, they're gonna put their faith in movie characters. No, they must put their faith in the Lord. And they must put their faith in the Lord and see how they are, the, the most high God dealt with their forefathers and foremen when they did what? When they obeyed and when they disobeyed the laws of God. A virtuous woman understands this because you know why? The reason why a virtuous woman will actually make time, diligent, and then be diligent about that, she understands that, listen, we are building a nation. And the people, the children that are growing up, they're going to be what? They're going to be integrated into the nation of Israel. We need to make sure that as they grow up, they grow up with their mind upright. They need to grow up knowing and understanding that we are the children of Israel and this is how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. There must not be like demons. You understand? Because guess what? They're going to grow old. They're going to be men. They're going to be women. They're going to be not. They're going to need to get married. When they get married, guess what? If they have not been taught, what's going to happen in the house? What's going to happen in their house of that man? Chaos and confusion. You understand? We cannot build a nation like that. A virtuous woman, like I said, a virtuous woman is a revolutionary woman. Understand that. Okay? Give me the book of Psalms 78, verse 1. Psalms chapter 78, verse 1. Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 78, verses 1. Uh -huh. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. So now we must open our, we must pay attention to the words of God's mouth, the law. We must not be paying attention to the things that are not profitable for our spirit. So as a virtuous woman, your job is to make sure that the things that you speak, how your speech, okay? If you want the children, if you want your children, if you want your children to be able to speak well, not to speak with disrespect. You, best, you, you, guess who you must, you must fix that yourself. You must make sure you, 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 you have power over your mouth. You control your tongue. You know how to speak to your Lord. Guess what? When the children speak to you, they're going to move in the same mannerism as you are moving. When, they, when the children speak to their father, they're going to use the same tone that you are using with your Lord. Each one, teach one. Okay? Read that again, verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 1. Read. Give ear, my people, to my law. 
Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Jump, read verse two. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse two. Mm -hmm. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. You see that thing? I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Watch this. Come on. Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. And our what? And our fathers have told us. And our fathers have told us because the father is going to make sure that the woman teaches the children. The thing, everything that the mother teaches the children is what the father has commanded, the blueprint. Remember, the virtuous woman, she understands those characteristics that we went over, they are dependent on one another. By the time you get to teach the children, you already have the understanding of your role, your order, the order that the Lord has set up. You understand your role. You understand that you must honor your husband. You understand that you must support him. You must reverence him. When it comes to teaching the children, guess what? You understand all of those pillars that we went over. It's going to be easy when you deal with the children. You understand? Because you're in complete order. You understand what is required of you. Okay? Read. Verse 4. We will not hide them from the children. We will not what? Hide them from the children. We will not hide the laws of God from our children. That's why it says, when you rise up, when you sit us down, when you walk us by the way, teach them diligently because you know the children don't know nothing. He says they might hear. How are they going to hear? They're going to hear They're going to hear the word of God because you teach it. You are diligent with them. You understand? Read. We will not hide them from the children, showing to the generation to come the praise of the Lord. The what? Showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. Showing the generation to come the praises of the Lord. Meaning what? They must put their trust in the Lord. They must have faith in the Lord. They're not going to have faith if they are watching TV all day. They're not going to have faith because guess what? You're not going to be able to have respectful children if you're always on the phone. You're always running your mouth. You're always gossiping. You're always doing this and that. Your mouth's always open. You don't cook. You don't clean. You don't do nothing. Guess what? The children are watching them. They are watching you. Guess what? You create monsters because when they grow, they're going to have big mouths. They're not going to be able to have a good and balanced life. They're going to have problems when they grow up because you set the poor example from the jump. Okay? The virtuous woman understands that she's not going to make a mistake because she understands that when I, the education of the children, it guarantees the, the, the nation that is honorable. You understand? That's four again. I need some power. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 4. We will not hide them from the children, showing to the generation to come the praise of the Lord uh -huh. and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done. You see that thing? And the way you do it is make sure that you rehearse the laws of God in their mind. You rehearse them daily. And then when you before you go to sleep, you make sure that you sit with them, you go over the history now. What happened? You read Genesis for them. You read Exodus, the plague, and all of that. So they put their trust in the Lord. They understand that the Most High God is in control, and He's our Father. He, 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 he watches out for us. And the way He does it, He gave us the law to conduct ourselves. You understand? Read. For He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Read verse 5 again. The book of Psalms 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, uh -huh. which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That the father should make known the laws of God to their children. How did they do that? Through the mothers. Because the fathers will make sure that they set their house in order. The mothers will make sure that they accomplish that order by teaching the children. You understand? Um, read on. Verse 6, mm -hmm. that the generation to come might know them, even the children who should be born, who should, who should arise and declare them to their children. You see that thing? This is generational now. It says that the generation to come might know them, even the children who should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. You understand? This is now the third generation, and four, and so forth. Okay, read. That they might set their hope in God. Stop right there. Read that part again. 
the book of Psalms, chapter 28, verse 7, that they might set their hope in God. The reason why you make sure that when you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you're in the house doing whatever, you're making sure that the Lord, the laws of God are taught to the children so that they set their hope in the Lord. They must not be setting their hope in Kanimba. They must not set their hope in, uh, I don't know, Tel Tulsi. No, they must set their hope in the Lord because they know where their power comes from. You understand? Both boys and girls, they need to understand this thing, to set their hope not in, in the Avengers. No, they must set their hope in what? The Lord, the Most High God. And they're going to read the history of their forefathers because their forefathers, they put their hope in the Lord and the Lord delivered them. That's how you build a nation. You understand? Read. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, uh -huh. but keep his commandments. You see that thing right there? But keep his commandments. That they do not forget the works of God. Because if you don't do that, they will definitely forget the works of God. Watch this. Hmm. Let me see something. Give me one second. There's something I actually want to get. Yes, give me, give me, give me the book of Exodus. Okay, give me Exodus chapter thirteen, verse eight. Watch this. Exodus chapter thirteen, verse eight. The book of Exodus, chapter thirteen, verses eight. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, "This is done." Because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. So now, like for this goes into Passover. So you teach your children the high holiday so that they must be able to not set their hope in Christmas. You understand? Expecting that uh, some, 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 some white man to come through the chimney to give presents. No. They must, they must what? You teach them about the high holiday so that they can look forward to that. Not look forward to Christmas. Look forward to Passover. Look forward to the destruction of Nigeria, celebrating the destruction of our enemy. You understand? The Feast of Purim, the Feast of Dedication, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Memorial of Glory of Trumpets, the new moon. They must set their hope in the Lord. So when those things are done, when we celebrate the, the, the High Holy Day, here is going into Passover. Okay? Verse 8 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 13, verse 8. Read. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, say, this is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. So now, because your son is going to ask you, why do we do this? Why do we take the leaven out of the house? Your daughter will ask this. Why do we take leaven out of the house? You explain to them. The reason why we're doing this is because of what the Lord did for us when he delivered us out of the hand of the Egyptians. They say, hmm, that means we have what? We have somebody watching over us up there. Okay, ready? And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes. Stop right there. Read verse 9 again. The book of Exodus 13 verse 9. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes. So he's saying it is, meaning what? The celebration of Passover as an example it shall be what? It shall be a sign upon thine hand. Because what do you do with your hand? You apply you understand? Your hand represents what? Your action. The, your, your argument to the laws of God. Your, help, your humility to the laws of God. Submitting yourself to God's commandments. Then it says, comma, and for a memorial between your eyes. What is between your eyes? Your brain. Your mind is between your eyes. You understand that? That's what it says for a memorial between your eyes. Give me that in Psalms 137. Psalms 137. And verse 5. Psalms 137, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 137, verses 5. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let, let my right hand forget her cunning. You see that thing? He says, if I forget thee. So, because in order for you to forget, where does it take place? In your mind. Between your eyes. That's where your mind is at. If I forget, that means it's the way. It's in memory. Now it's no longer because you're no longer... You're no longer rehearsing the righteous end, so you cannot build your faith up. Okay? Oh, Jerusalem, let my, let my right hand forget her coming. Meaning what? My right hand is not going to apply the laws of God no more. You understand? Because what? Because I forgot Jerusalem. I forgot the laws of God that were supposed to be a what? A sign between my eyes. Read. 
137 verse 6. Uh -huh. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. You see that? You see, he says, if I do not remember thee, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember. You see, verse 5 says, if I forget thee. Then verse 6 is, is, is saying the same thing. It says, if I do not remember. Because where you remember it? Your mind. Your mind is what remembers things. Okay? Go back now. Exodus chapter 13, verse 9. The book of Exodus, chapter 13, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. Verse 9, come on. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes. You see that thing, a memorial. It's something that is kept in memory. That is done regularly. You understand? As a, for a memorial between thine eyes. That's why they're going to set their hope in the law. A virtuous woman will understand that thing. She's not going to be what? Because, for instance, I'll give an example. I'm using me as an example. I made a decision in my house, no television. You understand? When we are still in our simplicity before this truth, we had a TV with DSTV. When I came into this truth, I sold my floor on the spot. Okay? The TV was gotten rid of. No TV in the house. You understand? And guess what? Things started to change in the house. Okay? There was, all, uh, there was a lot more peace in the house. My point is, there's a lot of demonic activity that goes on through the television. You understand? So and the minute we took those things out, guess what? There was peace in the house. Guess what? Things started to fall into place. Because now there was time. There was time to do what? They were trying to set everything in order. You understand? So that they set their hope in the Lord. They trust in the most like God. But some of you, you're not going to do that. Because you know why? TV is your idol. Television is your idol. You can't possibly live without that explorer. You simple as hell. Read that again, verse 9. The book of Exodus 13, verse 9. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand. And for a memorial between thine eyes, Read. that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. You see that thing? That the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. Why? Because it's in memory now. When you open your mouth, guess what? You're going to open your mouth in wisdom. It, where virtuous woman, she opens her mouth in wisdom. Guess what? Her children also will do the same thing. Read. For with a strong hand that the Lord put thee out of Egypt. You see that thing? When you teach your children these things, guess what? They're going to set their hope in the Lord that we read in Psalm 28. Next verse. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in, in his season from year to year. Let's talk about the Passover. That's the one that's coming now. Read on. Verse 11. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it to thee. Now jump down to verse 14 now. Watch this thing. Verse 14. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this? And what shalt thou say unto him? That thou shalt say unto him, By strength of hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt, from the house of bondage. You see that thing? When the children are asking regarding the Passover, you're going to explain why. And guess what they're going to do? That thing is a glorious thing. And they're going to set their hope in the Lord. Okay? That the reason why we celebrate him is because the Most High delivered us out of Egypt with a mighty hand from the hand of Pharaoh. They need to understand that. Read verse 15. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that Open it. the matrix. The matrix the is ma the womb. The, the matrix is talk about the womb. So write that down. The matrix is talk about the womb. Read. Therefore, I sacrifice the Lord all that openeth the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of thy children I redeem. Come on. And it shall be for a token upon thine hand and for frontlets. 
between thine eyes. For by strength of thy hand, the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. You see that thing? It says between, it says what? It says, it says and for frontage between thine eyes. What are those frontage? Because you see the scribes and Pharisees, they used to wear box in their forehead and all of that, signifying that they have the law. But they, they, they took it literal. It wasn't literal. It was spiritual. The laws must be in your mind. So you'll be able to do them. You understand? So now, when you tell your children this, when they ask you, why are we celebrating Passover? Why are we celebrating the Feast of Dedication? Why are we celebrating Purim? So on and so forth. Guess what? You're going to explain to, to, to your children why. And guess what? They're going to put their, their hope in the Lord. They're going to do that. So that is the job. Okay? The job of a, of a, of a virtuous woman, a virtuous mother, a virtuous wife, that is exactly what they're going to put their, their energy into it. That's one of the things they're going to be doing. And they're going to take pride in that thing. Okay? Um, give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 20. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 20. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 20. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God had commanded you. Read. Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Come on. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and so upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. Come on, before our eyes, meaning we saw these things. Read. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in. To give us the land which he swear unto our fathers. Uh -huh. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. Right. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. You see that thing right there? So the children will understand that it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all the laws of this God, all the, the words of this law, as the Lord has commanded. Your children will put your trust in the law. You understand? They are not going to put their trust in, in TV television. They're going to put their trust in the Most High like God. The act their forefathers have done in the days of old. What the Most High like God did for their forefathers and foremothers. And guess what? The more they read, the more you read them the history and all of that, the more you teach them the laws, the milk, they're going to what? They're going to use you as a, as a righteous role model in their eyes. And when they read the history of their foremothers, if you've got girls, they're going to realize that my mother actually is more than this one. And when, the, when, when it's the son, they're going to realize, you know what? Actually, my father is modeling this one for this forefather. He's behaving just like King David. He's behaving just like Nehru, so on and so forth. He's behaving just like Moses. Guess what? Already now you've got the, your children will have heroes, the true heroes of the Bible, their forefathers and foremothers. That's how you put your trust in the Lord. A virtuous woman understands this. You know why she does that? She does it because she knows if I don't teach them, guess what's going to happen? The whole nation of Israel is going to be destroyed. Then that means the next generation is doomed. So the virtuous woman, she thinks, she thinks in the future. She's thinking, you know what, if I don't do this in the future generation, it's going to be a whole lot of mess. So let me stop the, the, the vicious cycle and make sure that I present a certain good work. Understand that thing. Give me Titus 2 verse 1. Okay, we went over the book of Titus, but let's go, let, we're going to go over it once more again. Titus 2 verse 1. I'm going to run through it because I've already touched on it. Titus 2 verse 1. There's another, you know, there's, there's the actual class I want to go into, so I want to finish this part. Okay, come on. Titus 2 verse 1. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 1. But speak thou the things which are which become sound doctrine. Read that again, verse 1. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Jump down to verse 4 now. No, no, verse 3. Verse 3. The aged woman likewise that they be in behavior as become a holiness, not false accusers, 
not given too much wine, teachers of good things. So you see, the age women, their job is maybe to teach the young women. They end one. The young women will know how to conduct themselves and they want to know how to teach their children because they were taught of their former. That's the order right there. You understand? So sisters, right now, you are being prepared for that thing. That's a very important and a huge role. So take it serious. Okay, come on. The aged woman, likewise, the day be in behavior as become a holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things. Now that's a heavy thing because it says the aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as become a holiness. Do we know holiness is the law, not false accusers. Don't be gossiping, sisters, because your children are gonna gossip also. Okay, it says not given too much wine. Don't be a drunk. Teachers of good things. You must teach the laws of God. Good things. That's going into the law. Give me that in uh, 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Um, give me 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. 1 Timothy 1 verse 8. First book of Timothy. Chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. But we know that the law is good. You see that thing? We know that the law is good. The law is good. Come on. If a man use it lawfully. If a man use it lawfully. Okay, now go back to Titus 2. Titus 2 verse 4 now. The book of Titus 2 verse 4. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. You see that thing? So you need to be taught how to love your children. Guess what? You need to be taught them. Because when you look at our sisters today, they don't know how to love their children. They don't know how to do that. You, when you have a daughter, you cannot be dressing your daughter in leggings. That's not how to love your, your daughter. You love your daughter, you must be having a care of their body. Guess what? You are, from a young age, the sisters are already putting their whole spirit on the young child. So, but a virtuous woman is not going to think like that. A virtuous woman will understand, if I do this from when they are young, if I wear them, if I put pants on them, they're going to be a whore in the future. I'm raising a whore in my house. And when this whore becomes a demon, I'm not going to, I'm going to complain. Guess what? You need to make sure that you don't do that. You teach your children from when they are young, about their neck. You need to be taught how to love your children. And the way to do that, you take care of their body. How to sit, okay? They must cross their legs. They must, how to dress. You understand what type of apparel to wear when it comes to those menstrual stuff and all of that. As they grow older, once they, when they experience those menstrual stuff, guess what you must do? You explain to them, by the way, the reason why you're having menstrual cramps is because disobedience that happened in the garden is a reminder of your disobedience. So sisters, the reason why every month you have menstrual, you, you, you go through these menstruations and all that, you have menstrual cramps, it is because of your disobedience. So it's a reminder. So guess what? Whenever you're going through those things, when you're on your period, don't be throwing tantrums. Don't be acting like a demon. No. You must, re that's supposed to humble you and say, you know what? These things is happening every month. So whenever they happen, I'm always using them as an excuse to act like a demon. No. In the truth, you don't work like that. When you go through those things, you must go to Genesis 3.16. Read the whole book of Genesis chapter 3 to see really where it went, where it, where it all went wrong. When you have girls, when they grow older, when they get to that stage, and then they are, now they are matured enough to understand the same thing, guess what you do? You explain that stuff. So it's a reminder to humble them. To say, you know what? I need to keep my mouth shut. I need to examine myself. I need to be more obedient. Guess what? Things are going to change. The Lord will have mercy on you. The Lord will start to deal with you to show you certain things in the scripture. Okay. Um, let me see. Read verse 5. Read verse 5. Titus 2 verse 5. Come on. Verse 5. To be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, good, obedient to the own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So now, it says they must be discreet, so you must make sure that you teach your children to have discretion. They must be chaste. Okay, that goes into what? They must make sure that their virginity is always intact. You understand? Nothing must go in there when it what? Nothing must go there 
when, when it, the, the, anything that goes there must be stuff that is required, meaning what? At the right time, when they get married, there must not be anything that is going there that is not supposed to be there. You understand? So that's why it says they must be chaste. You understand? Keep us at home. Good. Obedient to their own husbands that the word of God be not blasphemed. Because when the sisters, they disrespect their husband, the word of God will be blasphemed. Yes, because what? The children will take, on, will take on that behavior. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book. Give me Sirach 30 verse 1. Ecclesiastical chapter 30 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 1. He that loveth the son causes them oft to feel the rod. Come on. That he that he may have joy over him in the end. Is it listen? You you must if you love your children, you must make sure that you snack your children. It says, you what it says, um, he that loveth his son causes causes him oft to feel the rod, that he may have joy of him in the end. Because you correct your children now. Because I see the sisters, they're emotional. They don't want to correct their children because no, they're going to cry. No, no, no. They are decreasing the waters of the, of the head. Okay? That's what they're doing. So that's fine. Yeah. They are doing low shedding. Okay? Read on. Verse 2. He that chastised his son shall have joy in, in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. You see that thing? If you correct your children, your sons or your daughter and your daughters, Guess what? He says, you're going to rejoice of your children among your acquaintances. Because guess what? The, you, your children are going to have a good report among the people, among the community. In the nation of Israel, they will have a good report. That's a testament to your parenting skills. Because you are diligent. You sit down with your children, you teach them. You don't, you don't let a moment pass by without making sure that the scriptures is what's in their head. Read. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. You see that thing? When you teach your children, you make your enemies mad. Because our enemies, they like it when our children are out of order. Because guess what? When I, because our children are out of order, they, they teach their children and they use our children as an example of what not to be and of what not to become. But when you teach your children, guess what? You grieve the enemy because your children, guess what? They grow up knowing who they are. They will grow up knowing that there's a father in heaven who loves them. They will grow up knowing that they're going to possess the nations all the time. That's right there. Guess what? It gives your children what? Confidence. It gives your children honor and respect. Understand that thing. Verse 3 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, 30 verse 3. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. You see that thing? Read on. Verse 4. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. Read. For he, for he had left one behind him that's like himself. You see that thing? It's as though his father died, yet he is as though he were not dead. Because even when his father died, guess what? It's going to be as if the father never left. Why? Because he's going to still he's going to follow after the footsteps of his father. Because his father was an honorable man. So guess what, sisters? You must make sure that you teach your children to what? To reverence their fathers. To reverence, to honor their fathers. You understand? Especially when you have daughters, you better make sure that your daughters, they honor their father because that, that, that is the first, that is the first um, point of access to what? To dealing with a man. Guess what? Their father, their father is that example in their daughter's life. That's why like, they become daddy's girl. Why? Because the daughter, they're going to make sure that when they grow, they're going to marry a man just like their father. And if you are a good father, guess what? Guess what? The most High God will make sure that your, your daughter is married to an honorable and, and honorable and a God-fearing man, the one that keeps the laws of God. Understand that thing. Read that again, verse 4. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 4. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. For he has left one behind, behind him that is like himself. You see that thing? Because for because he has left one behind him that is like himself. You ever notice 
Um, they say, you know, you must be better than your father. That's some evil stuff. Listen, it says, he left himself, he has left one behind him that is like himself. That's why the Apostle Paul said, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. You see that thing? Because the women tend to do that. They tend to make sure that they, 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 their sons, they outdo their father. Why? Because they want to make sure that their father, the sons hate their father. So sisters, do not be doing evil stuff like that. Okay? Read on, verse 5. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. Come on. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. You see that thing? When he died, he wasn't sorrowful because he knew that, listen, I'm, I, I make sure that my children, they're going to follow after me. Likewise, sisters, you, your job as a virtuous woman, a virtuous wife, I'm saying virtuous woman for a reason. Because if you're not married yet, but you're still the virtuous woman, guess what? Children coming into the truth, you're going to jump at the chance. You know what? I need to set the right example because these children are looking up to us. Okay? Read. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies mm. and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. You see that thing? He says he left, he left behind him an avenger against his enemies. Because guess what? Your children will make sure that when they apply the laws of God, the next generation now, like we read in Psalm 78, Psalm 78 was talking about, listen, you may, the, that the generation to come might know them. Why? Because you understand the generation to come, they're gonna, the nations are not going to walk all over us. The nation will not disrespect us. Why? Because they're seeing that we're rising up and we understand who we are. We understand how we must move and conduct ourselves. The nation will not disrespect us in that regard. Okay? Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 6. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. Come on. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds. You see that thing? It says he that and his bowels. Hold on. It says he that maketh too much of his son. He said, you see, it says shall bind up his wounds. Meaning what? You're going to be responsible for his mess up. You understand? Because you are making too much of him. Instead of applying verse 1. Verse 1 says, He that loveth his son causes him off to feel the wrong, that he may have joy of him in the end. If you don't apply verse 1, verse 7 is going to happen to you. Okay, likewise with the women. When you are dealing with the children, that's exactly what's going to happen. Your children are not going to, they're not going to obey you. They're going to disrespect you. You know why? Because you don't make sure that when they go off, correct that thing immediately. Read that again, verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 7. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds, and his bowels will be troubled at every cry. You see that thing? It says his bowels will be troubled at every cry. Because every single time your, your son or your daughter's name comes up, guess what? You're going to be like, you're going to be cringing. You understand? Because, you know, I cannot believe I gave birth to this thing. That's the exact way, that's how, that's how far you're going to get to. Because why? Because you don't sit down to teach your children. Read verse 8. Verse 8. And horse not broken becometh headstrong. You see that thing? Read. And a child left to himself will be willful. You see that thing? A child that is left to themselves, they are going to be willful. You know why? Give me Sirach chapter 33, verse 27. Sirach 33, verse 27. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter, chapter 33, verse 27. Send him to labor, that he be not idle. For idleness teacheth much evil. For idleness teacheth much evil. So go back to Sarah 39, verse 8. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 8. And horse not broken becometh headstrong. And a child left to himself. Will be willful. They're gonna be willful because they are idle, and idleness teaches much evil. Read on. Cocker thy child, and he shall make thee afraid. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. That goes back to verse seven. It says, "Cocker thy child," meaning what? Cuddle your child. Play with your child. It says, "He shall make thee afraid." Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. Do not make too much of your children. Make sure that they understand who's the parent, who's the child. Always maintain that relationship. Likewise in the truth. 
Okay? That's how it goes. Order and structure and rank. That's why we are so militant. The minute I see somebody going off, we will check you. Why? Because we don't want to have this situation right here. Okay? Uh, read verse 13. Sirach chapter 30, verse 13. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30, verse 13. Chastise thy son and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. You see that thing? Chastise thy son and hold him to labor. So, sisters, your job is to make sure, as a virtuous woman, always, that's why I go back to the timetable. Make sure that you have that timetable set up. That timetable is going to be able to set the structure in the house to make sure that the children, when they wake up, they know exactly what they have to do. They are not confused. Because the minute they are confused, they're going to be idle. They're going to be frustrated. They will frustrate you. You make, make sure that you set that order from the get-go. So that when they wake up, they have a routine until they go to sleep. Once you do that, and you also must have some nap time. Okay, have a time when... This day, on this, this time, every day, they take a nap, okay? Because they are still children, they need to be able to develop and all of that. So you need to keep those things in mind. That requires research. That requires diligence, okay? The food that you cook your children, the portions. You need to people go into it to teach your children how to manage their portions, to make sure that their children, they eat at a specific time. They must not eat. As soon as it's after six, that, that's the wrong time to eat. Make sure that they eat before six or at six o'clock, they must be eating. Okay? So that when it's seven o'clock, they're done eating. As soon as it's after seven, no food. They need to understand that you must develop that routine. They wake up in the morning, they know they must eat at a specific time. They must have lunch at a specific time. They must have a nap at a specific time. They must have their classes, their scriptures at a specific time. Teach them, educate them. Those times must be set to the time they go to sleep. They are eating habits. Okay? They must etiquette how to be able to what, how to sit down, how to hold your plate, how to eat. And all. I'm speaking from experience. You need to do stuff like that. And when the children, when, they, when, when it becomes automatic, listen, they pick it up quick. They, listen, if you are diligent, sometimes you, you will see things that your children will do will surprise you. Okay? I'll give you an example. This one time, um, my daughter, there was a point where in the last born, I was like to her, listen, you don't have to do nothing at this point. You can just let yourself. You know, for the first five minutes, she didn't get what I was saying. She's like, what? I must be sitting and relaxing. I said, yeah, take a break. She's like, nah. She's not getting it, but she's doing it, but she don't get it. And then five minutes later, she said, Daddy, what can I do? I said, I'm like, hmm. You understand? Know that was a good, that was a proud father moment right there. Okay, okay, so goodbye for that. But my point is, you hold your children to labor when they grow up, they start to realize that they always make sure they are always productive. And that's the spirit you need to put in your children. Sisters, that's your job. You need to make sure you do that stuff. A virtuous woman will understand that's my job. I need to do that to make sure that my children are always in order. My children, their conversation is, is on point. You understand? They don't do things that other children do. It doesn't mean they don't go out and play. You must, they must give them a chance. They must be playing. But always be monitoring. Be always be, make sure that you, you always in sight. You always see them. And you always can hear what they talk about. You understand? So as they grow up, they make sure they are always mindful of what is written. That, and that, that, by the way, let me put it like this. That is not an easy job. That's not a walk in the park. Because what I'm saying is not a walk in the park. What I'm saying is a hard work. Hard work with frustration, trial and error, and you can get it right. Okay? Give me Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Let me see. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Let me see if I read it. Nah, I don't think I want to go there. Hold on. Before you read it, let me get it. No, no, that's it right there. Okay. So now, um, this is the last characteristic of a virtuous woman. Okay, we went over all of them now in this episode. Uh, on this episode, we finished all of that. So let's review. The first characteristic of a virtuous woman is that she understands God's order. The second characteristic of a virtuous woman, she knows her role. The third characteristic of a virtuous woman, she honors her husband. The fourth characteristic of a virtuous woman, she supports the man of God. The, uh, the fifth characteristic 
she teaches her children. You understand? Okay, so now, let's just end the class right here. Let's break bread. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he, he took the cup when he had sub saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand to Okay, so let's go.